he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it. Shove it, squad. I'm gonna have to be honest with you. The second half of 2003 TNA is appalling. It might be the most worthless wrestling show I've watched. It's not funny, it's not exciting, it has no stars, and the roster sucks. I just don't care about security teams feuding and Eric Watts. It's not good television in any way. It's one of the reasons I've struggled to keep up with these reviews. But I figure if I power through this part, it's bound to get better soon. It couldn't be worse. On the news front, I'm planning on making a year one TNA long video using what I've done so far, plus the many Asylum era wrestlers that I've interviewed. Plus, we've got the Slash Man coming on the Shove It show next week. It just makes sense. So this video will be episode 71 and 72. Ah, uh, the show starts with Don Callis and the red shirt security. Kill me. Why is Joey Legend now a red shirt security member? He was a wrestler last time I checked. Why is the Abyss pushing out a dump in the background? They're about to start moaning about something when a wild slap nuts appears. Hey, Jeff Jarrett. This could be one of the most irritating starts to a show I've ever experienced. They've literally put all the worst characters in the starting segment. Jarrett says that the world is against him and wants to take his title away. Then it gets worse when Jarrett thinks that Joey Legend is Stephen Richards. Jarrett asks them all to beat up anybody who's after Jarrett's bell. It feels like this happens every week. Jarrett demands an update on Hulk Hogan. You might think that's the end of anything annoying now, but no. The red shirts are coming to the ring now. The ring is filled with trash. There's also a bunch of random weapons and rubbish hanging everywhere. They're having a match against... No. Eric Watts. The Sad Man and the man called Raisin. I don't want to watch it. Fine. It's a mindless weapon match. The Shield. Sorry, the red shirt security hit a triple power bomb on the Sad Man on top of chairs. You could hear a needle drop in the asylum. The Terminator and Eric Watts end up being handcuffed together. Joey Legend and Northcutt get really confused about this and have a long argument about the location of the key. The ECW guys smash their heads in. Watts hits the Terminator in the slash zone. The high point of the match is Goldilocks running to the ring. That's it. That's the high point. The Terminator tries to terminate her. He screams, give me the key, you bitch. Watts saves her and she unlocks him with one of those well-known universal handcuff keys. The Terminator gets a guillotine leg drop on his arm. and Hopefully that writes him off telly. Eric Watts runs wild in the ring with a kick and the choke slam. Raven beats the Terminator with the raisin effect. Good, now don't let them ever be on TV again. Raven is annoyed that a tennis racket is blocking the camera's view of his celebrations. Don West tries to flog us some TNA merchandise for a while, including a Dilo Brown bobblehead, even though Dilo hasn't been on the show for about two months. It's like reverse marketing. Mike Tanay of a pre-recorded interview of AJ Styles. Today asks him how he feels about recent accusations that AJ isn't good enough to be a main eventer. AJ runs down a list of all his credentials. Mike Tanay informs us that AJ will be facing Abyss tonight. AJ says that match will be all about survival because he wants to have a match with Slap Nuts instead. Out now is the notorious KID Kid Cash. He will be facing the Shark Boy. It seems to be an evenly well-worked start to this match until a botch. Cash tries a crossbody and both men just sort of slop to the floor. Cash ends up on the outside where the Shark hits a dive. Shark catches Cash with a knee to the noggin on the way back to the ring for a two. Once again now, Cash tries to dive, and this time it's better with a clothesline. Cash is very unhappy at the ref's count and almost pays for it when the Shark Boy small packages him. Cash quickly hits a brutal backbreaker that is barely acknowledged. Shark Boy manages to block his next dive and hits a Frankensteiner. Shark Boy isn't finished and hits the Shark Bite and a Bulldog, which almost turns Cash inside out. Just a two. Cash finally manages something out of a beautiful spring and moonsault. It should be over, but it isn't. Cash quickly picks him up, but the Shark slips out of the moneymaker. Cash is a persistent pitbull though and keeps trying and does hit the money maker seconds later. It's over. Kid Cash is a bad winner and a dick also, so he tries to strip the shark boy of his mask. Oh no, more security. But this time, plot twist, they have black shirts. Predictably, Don Harris comes to shark boy's rescue. Kid Cash isn't afraid of him though and he slaps him. He's about to kick Cash's ass when he runs away. In the back, the New York nerds and the gifted Glenn Gilberti, how is he gifted? are talking about their tag match tonight because the belts are up for grabs against the free live crew. The master of the cab driver slam interrupts. Swinger says, why is this schmuck stealing my promo time? Young desperately wants help because he has to face Crisp Saban tonight. They tell Young he's not an X-Division wrestler and he's screwed. On the way to the ring now is the don't look at my ass crew. 
They'll be taking on The Gathering are Julio De Niro and CM Punk. They're talking about how The Gathering are no longer in Raven's shadow. I'm pretty sure the last time we saw them, Punk was begging Raven not to disown them. Punk hits the dropkick to Siaki, who doesn't go down. Punk jumps over him, but regrets it when he's hit for half Nelson overhead suplex. De Niro is in now. Siaki no-sells his punch, and he aggressively shoves him down. Siaki seems to have a chip on his shoulder in this match. The big man is in now. De Niro dives on him, but he's caught and slammed. Umaga punctuates it with a knee drop, and Punk has to break up the pin. De Niro slips out of a slam, but his clothesline down. The Don't Look At My Ass Club hit a double spine buster now, just the two. Umaga dramatically smacks De Niro down, but he misses his splash. The tag is made now to Punk, who runs off Umaga to hit a shining wizard on Siaki. He grabs Umaga's big head and kicks Siaki down and hits a DDT on Umaga. Punk isn't done and he sends Umaga from the ring. The Gathering hit a double team side slam elbow drop. Surprisingly, Siaki kicks out. Umaga wakes up and starts clotheslining and kicking the Gathering. The crowd chant Ekmo. Not this again. Trinity doesn't want to slide a chair to Siaki. This cost them when comically the Gathering kick Umaga over Siaki and dogpile him for the free. I don't even get why Trinity isn't getting on with her team. Nothing's been established. This loss is not acceptable. God help me. Once again, the red shirt security team are in the back. Apparently, the Terminator is badly hurt. Kevin Northcutt grabs the mic. He says Raven isn't a genius. He's actually stupid because now he has to deal with Kevin Northcutt. Now, I'll have a match next week. It's actually a good promo. Don Callis reminds AJ Styles that he now has to face Abyss. David Jung, the master of the cab driver slam, has the most generic new music I've ever heard. Being led by Glenn Gilberti. From Gainesville, Georgia, he weighs in at 200... He, of course, has the gifted Glenn Gilberti with him. How is he gifted? And he takes on Crisp Saban. Well, it's not much of a match. David Young is saying a prayer. Saban kicks Gilberti off the apron and rolls up David Young. They call it the fastest match in TNA history. It went about four seconds. Not a good show for all of our favourite characters this week. Gilberti grabs the mic and says the bell never rang. He says the fans paid for a pay-per-view and this isn't fair on them. He says Saban is screwing the fans and he goads Saban back into restarting the match. Chris Saban almost beats him in 12 seconds of a springboard missile dropkick, but this time the cabbie has the temerity to kick out. Young is mad now and he throws Saban with a release German. He hits a clothesline with authority as he stomps around the ring looking annoyed. Young puts on a submission, but he can't make the crisp crunch. Saban wakes up and cutters him across the ropes. He smacks out the gifted one. Saban flies into the ring into a pin, but Glenn tries to help Young stay on his feet. The ref kicks his arm away and Saban rolls up David Young for the free. The free live crew are in the back. Conad makes homosexual jokes about Gilberti. Mold Dog says they'll whip their opponents in three different flavours tonight. Vanilla, chocolate and burnt almond and take the tag belts. Harris and Storm interrupt. They argue about who the true number one contender should be. Truth says don't write a check your ass can't cash. Now we get footage of Jimmy Hart on some wacky radio show. Mike Tanay describes this as the most embarrassing moment in TNA history. I guess he didn't watch the first 10 TNA shows then. Basically, Hart was on a radio show hyping up Hogan vs. Jarrett again. All of this is unbearable in hindsight knowing that it will never happen. They talk about the Bash at the Beach incident again. Jarrett storms into the studio and says no one can talk about Bash at the Beach because it's still being discussed in a court of law. Slapnuts fights with the radio host. Hart desperately apologises on the radio and the host is very upset because he says he loved Jeff Jarrett before this. A lot of time is dedicated to these news reports. Uh, and if we hadn't heard enough about this stuff, Jimmy Hart is out now. Not long until this trash angle is over. It's eaten so much time over the last few weeks. He rambles on for ages. Because this angle is stalling hard, Hart decides to ask Jarrett about Bash at the Beach again. This is unwatchable. There's some sort of bombshell that Hart is threatening to drop tonight. Jarrett is on edge. He comically chases Hart around Mike Tanay. Tanay again says Jarrett is an embarrassment to professional wrestling. Jarrett is about to beat up Mike Tanay when Hart returns to attack Jeff Jarrett. Then AJ Styles saves Jimmy Hart. Styles hits a springboard dropkick and a DDT before Jarrett has to bail again. Oh great, more TV time for redshirt wankers. Now a reminder that Shane Douglas has signed Tracy Brooks to his franchise. They've decided to pre-record the Free Life Crew musical entrance now because it wasn't very good life. They challenge for the tag belts belonging to the New York Nerds. AMW will watch this match from the ramp, perhaps giving away the ending to this match straight away. The crew control the opening. Moldog hits a big boot and they hit a double hip toss and a double elbow to Swinger. Truth continues the domination for power slam and an arm drag. Swinger's getting destroyed in there. Eventually, Swinger distracts the ref so the Diamond Man can send Moldog into the post. Finally, Swinger can tag out. Diamond hits a nice arm breaker and tags out. 
Gilberti and Conad look like they're about to come to blows. Diamond nails a super kick for a two. Eventually Truth has the tag though and the pace quickens. Truth and Dog hit a double team spinebuster kick. Killings now does a diving leg drop to swing his nutsack. Truth connects with the axe kick, but no, Gilberti drags the ref out the ring. That's enough to cause Conad to smack him one. Conad looks like a spud. Truth hits a bridging German suplex. Suddenly there's two refs in the ring. Apparently it's that annoying finish where both men's shoulders are down for the pin, so I guess nothing's been decided. The ref grabs the tag belts and storms to the back. It's announced that the belts have been held up. Now some X Division stuff. The Monster Mystery Man X has been dominating the X Division geeks. It's actually been really fun and I like how they've got some new camera angles for this. So it'll be a triple threat to decide the number one contender for that belt. Sanjay Dutt takes on the Mystery Man X and also the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels. Daniels tricks Sanjay into thinking that they're working together and then he bails. That got a laugh out of me. Sanjay is an idiot though and the same thing happens again. The two smaller guys kick X time and time again. Dutt manages to take him down for head scissors, but what an idiot. He wants to celebrate with Daniels, but he gets kicked down. Daniels throws Dutt into X and almost rolls up the X-Man. Now he slams Dutt on top of X. He hasn't been a factor at all yet. Now Daniels front suplexes Sanjay on top of X. And once again, Daniels throws Dutt at X, but this time he's caught and thrown right back at Daniels. X starts getting a foothold in this match now. He kicks Dutt down and he's the only man left standing. X hits both guys with a bat body drop at the same time. They decide to throw X out of the ring, but X catches Sanjay's dive, he doesn't really do anything. Daniels does a split-legged moonsault which just can't be caught. Now Sanjay hits a beautiful corkscrew plancher. Daniels and Sanjay fight alone for a bit now. Sanjay desperately tries to make Daniels tap when they fall out of the ring. Suddenly X flies out the ring for a flip dive. He keeps going for top rope Frankenstein on Daniels for a two. Big sit out pump handle slam now. Dutt has to break the pin up. The Angel's wings is reversed, but Dutt kicks X down into a pin for a two. Lovely move now as X snaps off a big pop up power bomb. Daniels cuts him off with a jawbreaker and an STO followed by the BME. Daniels does this not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Sanjay breaks up the pin. Now Dutt hits a shooting star pin, but it's not over. I have no idea which way this one's going. X stops Sanjay's next move and drops him on his face. He press slams Sanjay into the corner whilst Daniels almost rolls him up a couple of times. X responds with a big set out choke slam on Daniels. Again, the pin is broken up. The X-Man signals for the end as Sanjay springs into the ring of a Huracrana pin, which doesn't look that great. Wait, and that's over. Sanjay wins? Why? I've loved every second of X in TNA and you do this? Man, 2003 sucks Sonny Siaki's ass. Raven appears on the commentary desk moaning as usual. He makes a good point though. He says after he beats one red shirt security member, he'll be forced to face another the following week until he gets to Jarrett. They just did this storyline with Raven with James Mitchell's new church. So instead, he says he's just going to face the red shirts in a handicap match and get it over and done with. He looks scary. He looks intense. He's not rambling. It's the best Raven promo I've seen in TNA. Unfortunately, it was over too quickly. AJ Styles and Jimmy Hart have written AJ in feces on a truck. Jimmy Hart tells him that he's a star. The main event is the Monster Abyss versus AJ Styles. Well, at least it's finally a match that I want to see. Styles charges and clotheslines him straight out the ring, and then he hits a crazy flip dive. Man, when AJ does something, it always looks so much more incredible than most of the X Division. It gets scary for a moment, though, as Abyss pushes him onto the ropes, AJ flies at him with a moonsault, and Abyss almost misses him. He just about manages to power him onto the apron. The match continues on the outside. Abyss sends AJ into the guardrail. He slides under and dives back off the rail of a Hurricanrana. We're in the ring for the first time properly now. Comically, Abyss loses his way on an Irish whip. Stars eventually drop kicks him. Abyss throws AJ into the lights now and the match has turned. Abyss hits a big sit out face buster for a two. It's going along really well, nice intensity and fun. Then Don Callis has to get involved. He causes AJ to fly into the guardrail. See, why do they need Callis out there? Haven't we seen enough interference for one night? These guys didn't need this. AJ is busted open and the match slows to a snail's pace. Big side slam for the monster for a two. Suddenly AJ wakes up as he slips out of a powerbomb. He hits a head scissors and an insiguri kick. AJ looks to dive but Abyss pulls the referee in front of the missile drop kick. Nothing happens immediately and they continue wrestling. AJ hits the inverted DDT and a springboard 450 where his knees most certainly leave Abyss paying doctor's fees. But no, there's no ref. Don Callis hands a chair to Abyss. He creams Styles in the head. The ref wakes up, but only counts a two. That causes Abyss to flip out and he attacks the referee. 
He soon regrets all of that because Stars hits a sunset flip powerbomb on the chair. Still no ref. A new ref finally emerges, but it's a two. Stars wedges the chair in the ropes. Bad move because Abyss catapults him into the chair. He picks Stars up for the shock treatment and he hits it. Stars is still kicking out. Abyss once again flips and Black Hole slams the referee. Stars hits Abyss with the chair, but he doesn't go down. He goozles Stars, but the choke slam is reversed into a pin, and AJ Styles wins. What a match. It almost made the show watchable. Oh no, the red shirts attack Styles. Get rid of them. I was in such a good mood and now it's ruined. When do these guys piss off the show? They have no redeemable qualities. AJ tries to leave, but Jarrett attacks him from behind and smacks him with a belt. Now we've got a 4 on 1 beatdown in the ring. AJ takes multiple finishers. Raven comes to Star's aid, then Dusty Rhodes and Jimmy Hart arrive. Dusty says next week he's going to face Slapnuts. Wow, I can't say I'm looking forward to that. But the twist is that it'll be a fan's revenge lumberjack match. Right, now let's check out show two. Jimmy Hart is surrounded by fans frantically chanting pick me for the fan's revenge match tonight. To be fair, half of them are barely old enough to stand up. Jarrett and the red shirt wankers are on the way to the ring. It's announced that next week Jarrett will be defending his belt against Styles. Jarrett immediately threatens Mike Tanay. He's pissed off and says he can't deal with Tanay tonight. Jarrett is now goading Hogan, saying the NWA belt is the only one he hasn't held. He declares the Hulkster's career is finished as he doesn't have the balls to face Jarrett. He goes as far as doing a 10 bell salute for his career. He tells the morbidly obese bellboy who's called Tiny that he's too slow to ring the bell and Hogan isn't worth 10 bells. He moves on to making the fans mad, insulting them because tonight he's having a fans revenge match. He's eventually interrupted by hero Eric Watts. Jarrett is sick of being interrupted and says Don Callis runs the company. Eric Watts says he runs the company. For God's sake, I don't care who runs the company. Jarrett says Eric Watts dresses like a bum. He's got a point. Watts calls him a dick and a jackass. Jarrett starts stuttering with confusion. This is actually a fun exchange. So I've got a question. Who? What? Well, who are you listening to on the board of directors? Did I hear you right? Did you go, who? 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 What are you, an owl? Then Abyss jumps Eric Watts from behind. Watts gets a beat down from everybody, four on one. They're run off by Styles, Raven, and America's Most Wanted, for some reason. I guess because they got nothing better to do. In the back, Scott Hudson is with the New York Nerds, the Cab Driver Man, and the How Is He Gifted Man. The Diamond Man is really upset about his tag title being held up. It's a well-delivered promo again, but it's Simon Diamond, you find it hard to buy into it. Swinger insults the free life crew said only seven-year-old acne face girls scream for them. Gilberti is cuddling David Young in the background. Up next is the notorious KID Kid Cash. He is randomly facing low key. This one could be good. Christopher Daniel was on commentary. He says he doesn't have crackhead followers anymore because religion is no longer his goal. His goal is now the X Division title. Great end to that storyline then. It's a surprisingly slow start for this one with both guys favouriting a more map wrestling style. The pace quickens when Loki does a kip up and kicks Kid Cash. Cash dumps in his nappy of anchor and bails from the ring to fetch a chair. He doesn't use it. Loki cuts him off on his way back into the ring. He hits a double underhook bridging dragon suplex. I'm not even sure what it's called but it looked great. Cash is still in this one. He gives Loki a nice shoulder breaker. He gives Loki a bad gut of a spinning slam. Loki's cartwheel kick attempt is blocked and Cash smashes him with a moonsault for a two. Beautiful diving hurricanrana from Cash now. He signals that the end is near but the moneymaker is reversed and Loki does now hit his cartwheel kick. They do a beautiful top rope powerbomb hurricanrana reversal. I always like it when that comes off. Unfortunately the warrior Loki is distracted by Christopher Daniels. Cash pushes them into each other. Daniels throws Loki into the ring and then Cash sits on him for the free. TNA really know how to ruin a good match don't they? Cash is being a dick to the comrade team. Daniels is about to start a fight with him when Loki gets in his face. Kid Cash is still desperate to tell us that he doesn't fear Don Harris. Then he backs into him and he runs from him. It feels like half this roster are security members. In the back, Don Callis is threatening a picture of AJ Styles. Kevin Northcutt says it's his world and Raven's just living in it. Legend calls Raven 12 steps. The next match will be Shark Boy vs the Monster Abyss. They're basically saying that Shark Boy is like AJ Styles. Sharky hits some early drop kicks before he's dropped on his face. The comrade team interestingly inform us that Sharkboy has joined the war against Jeff Jarrett, further boosting his popularity. Abyss hits a side slam but misses his diving ass drop. 
Shark Boy managed to hit the Stratisfaction. The shark just keeps reversing everything. He decides to bite Abyss in the ass into a close two count. The DSD is attempted, but you can't hit that. He slips out of another Abyss Slam, but you can't slip out the Black Hole Slam. Not a convincing win for Abyss there. Shark Boy tries to attack Don Callus. Abyss saves him and crushes Shark Boy with a Batbreaker. Abyss isn't done though, and he power bombs the shark for a table. Nobody comes to his aid, not even the security team, so I guess nobody loves him. Raven is sat in a corridor like a junkie. He claims that the Terminator is the most feared man in TNA, but Raven has crushed his arm and put him out of wrestling. Oh, thank God, I hope that is true. He says all of this is just people trying to block him from achieving his destiny. Ex-girlfriend CM Punk walks up asking for time to talk to Raven. Raven doesn't want to talk to him. De Niro says tonight they're going to let Raven know how they feel about him disowning them. The Mystery Man X is here now. He's been ruined, so nobody cares. He's facing Crisp Saban. X immediately launches him out the ring. Saban looks shook. X challenges Saban to knock him down, but he can't manage it. Saban comes back into the ring with head scissors. Chris Saban attempts a monkey flip, but X cartwheels away and hits a sit out choke slam. No pin is made. Instead, he gets Saban hanging over the rope. X flies with a leg drop, but misses it. The crowd groan and boo. Saban sends him out the ring and hits a flip dive out there. He comes back to the ring with a springboard spinning heel kick for a two. X botches a bridge out of a pin and power bombs Saban. He now climbs to the top and flies with a swanton bomb, but he doesn't make a pin. Dude, I was watching the NWA TNA show the other day, man. And this dude, X, he stole my swanton bomb finish maneuver, man. But it didn't finish. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. And I'm going to tell my stone of friend Shannon all about you, X-Man. X sends him out the ring instead. He goes out there to hit a backbreaker across his knee. Couldn't he have done that in the ring with the same impact? X is now climbing to the top rope and Jesus, he misses a swanton bomb on the ramp. That was insane. Jeff Hardy wouldn't even dump in his nappy about that one. He'd be partially impressed. Saban manages to pick him up for the cradle shock and it's over. Great match, but why does X keep losing? I'm not sure he's had a match that I didn't enjoy, so fair play for that, but why lose all the time? Jimmy Hart is in the crowd hyping the strap-on match. Yay, red shirt Burks are here. It's revealed that Raven has broken the Terminator's arm, so he is gone from TNA. So here we have Raven in a handicap match. Joey Legend escapes the Raisin effect, but Raven dives on both of the red shirts. Legends turns into a Kung Fu Master, hitting multiple chops. The Legends super kick gets him a two. Now Legend switches out of a bulldog and hits the inverted DDT for a two. Out of nowhere, Raven hits the Raven effect to Joey Legend, and that's the three. But fans of the red shirts don't fret, because this is elimination rules, so the match continues. The red shirts just give up and start cheating. They attempt to cream Raven with a chair. He counters that, but now the monster abyss is here and he black hole slams Raven. The match has been thrown out. The gathering watch on as Raven is beaten down. A table is set up on the outside. Raven's ex-girlfriend suddenly decide that they can't take it anymore. They save him. Can Raven either kiss these guys or kick their asses? This storyline has gone on for months. Abyss is dragged away because he's out of control. The X Division title is on the line now as Sanjay Duck gets his shot. The champion is Shawn Michaels' cousin, Michael Shane. We get a nice trade-off to start here of Sanjay Duck hip-tossing Michael Shane out the ring. Duck is unable to fly out the ring though. Not a lot happens until Duck hits a beautiful DDT. Talking of beautiful DDTs, Michael Shane also has one. What are people thinking of Michael Shane so far? Is he a bit bland? Is that his problem? Sanjay blocks Sweet Chin Music into a sliced bread for a two. Duck does manage to hit the Hindu press when suddenly Shane Douglas breaks up the pin. Everyone is really confused. Tracy rubs the referee's face in her milk tanks. Shane smacks Duck with a chain for the three. It's finally officially confirmed that Michael Shane is part of the new franchise, even though TNA botched the announcement like a month ago. Dusty Rhodes hypes the fans' revenge match tonight. He admits that nobody wants to see him wrestle anymore. The New York nerds will once again fight a free live crew, but this time it's a six-man. It's really hard to care. I think it's for the belts, but it's a six-man? I'm not sure. But before anything can happen, America's most wanted get a big entrance. It's the mouldy one to be isolated for a long period of time. There's no need to rhyme. He eventually hits the double clothesline and tags out. Truth improves the match and hits the splits into the Road Dog assisted kicks. Conad hits a stone cold stunner on the gifted one. Truth has it won with a scissors kick, but no ref. The cab driver appears in the ring hitting Truth with a tennis racket. 
James Storm won't let that one go though, and he climbs into the ring and super kicks a chair into Gilberti's face. Truth beats Swinger with a back sack and crack. It was fine towards the end. AMW hand them the tag belts. I forgot this was even for the tag belts. It was a six man, it was weird. A bizarre pre taped segment with Roddy Piper boxing a mannequin, which he describes as being Jeff Jarrett. He says he's coming back to TNA now that Russo is gone. Don West types more TNA merchandise, including Babes of TNA. I didn't even know TNA had babes. What is it, a two page spread of Trinity and Tracy Brooks? They hardly have enough women to do a spread. If any of you watching got the babes of TNA, let me know who spread. Next week, it's AJ versus Jeff Jarrett, which sounds alright, but tonight's main event sure won't be. In the back, Raven is with his ex girlfriends. He says for one night, the gathering can team back up with him to face the red shirts and Abyss. Punk beams with happiness. Raven is coming for whoever wins out of Styles and Jarrett. The main event is Jeff Jarrett versus Dusty Rhodes in a fans revenge match. To be fair, most of the fans actually look like men. I guess those kids earlier didn't make the cut. The match doesn't start straight away because he wants to make fun of geeks around ringside. Jarrett tries to bail early, but then he realises he's actually scared of the fans. The fans desperately lash out at Jarrett with every opportunity. I guess this is the one Jeff Jarrett match that he won't have crowd brawling. The fans aren't even interested in whipping Dusty. Dusty shakes in the corner as Jarrett smacks him. Dusty punches Jarrett back with a flip-flop and fly. Jarrett tries to bail again, he's just not learning. Jarrett kicks the referee in the nutsack and smacks Dusty in his. He removes the referee's belt and starts to attack Dusty. The mouth of the South attacks him. Don Callis is also in the ring. Now Eric Watts is in the ring. He struggles to hit a chokeslam on Jarrett. He wants to chokeslam Callis, but the red shirts break it up. The match is thrown out. Again. How did these red shirts get so much damn TV time? It's over. What a shit show. These shows were both unbearable, with a couple of good matches hidden in the shit logs. You have to bite into them deep and stomach the vile taste to reach them, so it's probably not worth your time. Get those red shirt wankers off the show. If you do that, the product might grow. And if you don't agree with that, I'll show your girl the definition of fast and slow.